We're running an experiment on the planet right now with climate change, and we don't know what the outcomes of the experiment are going to be, but we know they're going to be very significant. These sorts of experiments have taken place in the past around mass extinctions, but the stubbornness of life is something that surprises me. Life is incredibly resilient, and Peter Rupnarine should know. He and his colleagues examine networks of species interactions known as food webs from the present and the past to understand how living systems fare in the wake of disaster. These circles represent species that live in coral reef ecosystems in the Caribbean. Each line represents an interaction between a predator and its prey. Within a food web like this one, there are multiple sub-communities where species interact more with each other than they do with other species in the food web. Within each sub-community, there are food chains that reveal very specific interactions, essentially who eats whom. In this food chain, reef sharks are the top predators. Top predators play a special role because they connect the food chains and the sub-communities. And along with other top predators, they become the backbone of a food web, knitting communities together to create a healthy and stable ecosystem. But we know from historical records that there used to be more sharks and other top predators present in this ecosystem. Overfishing and other threats are driving down the number of top predators. When species go extinct and food webs like this one lose stability, can the system still recover? To understand a living system's path to recovery, scientists study past extinction events. 252 million years ago, the Karoo Basin was a very rich terrestrial ecosystem. It was dominated by ancient relatives of mammals, and they were really neat before the dinosaurs. Because those fossils are so well studied, Rup Narayan and his colleagues were able to create a food web of this ecosystem. They've found that it lasted at least eight million years. You think of life as being about change. We're on a living planet, but as we've seen with our ecosystems, one of the things you do is, if you find a sweet spot, you sit in that sweet spot for a very long period of time. But then, the Karoo ecosystem fell victim to the end Permian mass extinction, the largest mass extinction on Earth, where more than 80% of species in the oceans and 70% of species on land became extinct. We have warming of the atmosphere, ocean acidification, more noxious gases in the atmosphere, drying of many terrestrial areas. When it's all over, the ecosystem recovers, but it takes a while. In this case, it takes more than five million years until it reaches stability, the sweet spot. Scientists turn to the fossil record to determine what lived when, and then enter these species into mathematical models to see how food webs looked at different periods in time. And they can adjust those models to see what other possibilities may have occurred. We looked at millions of alternatives, and what we found is that evolutionary history is superior to the alternatives that we could construct. Life took the most stable and resilient route. Understanding the stability of large living systems across long periods of time can help us understand how modern food webs and the species within them might fare in the future. I think what gives me hope is that humans refuse to quit. I see hope that we're going to address the problem at the scale that it needs to be addressed.